let's add a custom block model to Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in Georgia once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom block model to Minecraft. This is very similar to the custom item model that we've added last time. And this, of course, also has been done in the Blockbench tutorial series. I will once again link this in the top right corner as well as the description below. This is the block that we've made. Now, it is nothing crazy, right? It's nothing insane. However, it still is a block that is somewhat custom. Now, we already have the JSON file, so we can just take it and basically, well, copy it in here into the block models folder. And once again, we have to change some stuff. Namely, the textures should have only underscores and not any... Namely, the textures should have underscores and not any spaces in there. And then also, of course, we need to specify tutorial mod colon block slash. And we can just take this and paste it into all of the other textures as well. Now, that should be pretty much fine for this. Now, however, there are quite a few other things. Of course, we still need a block states JSON file as well. And that's going to be a very interesting one. Because for our case, when we actually look at this particular model, it really isn't, it really is symmetrical from the middle, right? If you like take a look at from the top, it pretty much is just symmetrical from the middle, right? You can basically rotate around and it is almost exactly the same. Now the texture is a little bit different, but when you really think about it, it pretty much is the same. However, I'm going to treat it so that we're going to rotate it around based on the position of the player or the facing of the player. Because that's usually the case when you have a custom block model. So let's go into the block package, custom package, and we're going to make a new Java class. And this is going to be the gem infusing station block. Now this will extend the horizontal facing block class. And we're going to hover over this, create constructor matching super, making sure that we make this public over here. And then what we want to do is we want to add a public static final direction property. This is going to be called facing and this is equal to the properties that horizontal facing over here. Now, when we add a property, it's very important that we also always call the append properties method and then just call builder.add and then just add the facing property to it. So there we go. That should pretty much do it. And that is the things that we need to do here. Now, I will copy over three different methods. The get placement state method. This is, looks like this. Then we're going to have the rotate method. That looks like this. And we'll also have the mirror method, which looks like this. Now, those three methods pretty much take care of everything that we want when we actually set this particular block down. So when we put this block down. It's going to get the facing property over here from the opposite of the player. This simply means that whatever face we have in the northern direction, so this face right here, is always going to face us when we set this particular block down. That is all that there is to it. That is pretty much the entire idea. You probably know this. When you set down a furnace block, the front of the furnace block always faces the player when you set it down. That is literally all that we're doing here. This is pretty much the exact same code from the furnace block. So that's pretty much how we're going to do this. So let's register this as well. Let's just copy over the jumpy block over here. And this is going to be the gem infusing station. And then the same name over here. Gem underscore infusing underscore station. And very important that this is a new gem infusing station block. Otherwise, it won't work. Keep that in mind to make this a new gem infusing station block. Very important. And we also want to call, which is also a very important part of this, non-opaque over here so that everything displays properly as well. Otherwise, we can actually see through the world when we set this down. And that's, of course, not what we want. Right, then let's add the block states JSON file here as well. So let's just add a new file, gem underscore infusing underscore station dot JSON. And I will copy over the contents. All of this is, of course, as always available to you in the description below, get our parts or an individual just as well. And you can see pretty much we're just checking for the facing and then just rotating this around. So you can see, you know, it, it, this shouldn't be anything too crazy. We're always pointing to the same block model JSON file, which is, of course, this one right here that we've copied over. However, we're just rotating it on the, in the Y axis, depending on the facing property that we have added right here. Let's also add the translation. There you go. Nothing too crazy. And then we also need an item model file. Now, the item model file is actually going to be the most uninteresting, let's say, it just points back to the block model file, so nothing too crazy. Of course, we still need the textures, so that's going to be the leg texture, the main texture, as well as the 
tray texture. So let's just add those three as well to the block textures folder. And that would be pretty much all that we need to do right here. So we're now going to take a look at this in game. It should all work. And then we'll discover one tiny thing that we need to take a look at as well. And that is the bounding box or the voxel shape. And I have some interesting stuff for that to say as well. But first of all, Let's see if it works. All right, find stuff back in Minecraft and the gem infusing station has been successfully added. So let's just set it down and there we go. And in theory, so we can see that the right side here is a little bit of a different texture. So if you set this down, you can see now it's always the right side, basically. So it does rotate just how we would expect it to. So that's a pretty good sign. But what you will also see is that if I stand on it, mm, well, it's not quite right. And that is exactly what I meant with the voxel shape or the particular bounding box over here. Uh, and we're going to basically fix this. However, I will also have a very important note on this, which is incredibly important. I pl I beg you to actually watch this and I will try to explain this best I can. Then you hopefully understand why you shouldn't have an exact bounding box. So let's go back to IntelliJ. Well, I said, let's go back to IntelliJ. We're actually back in Blockbench because what you can do is you can also export a voxel shape for your custom block over here. Now, this actually requires, a, you know, some very important things. It actually requires a plugin and that is the mod utils plugin over here that allows you to export voxel shapes. And what you have to do is basically not have any different groups over here because that's going to screw up with the, well, with the making of the voxel shape. You actually want all of your groups gone, so just like this. And then you, and then you want to add one group, which is called voxel shapes. Now I'll show this just because some people tend to always want to do this. And I basically want to recommend you that you don't do this, right? So you can do it like this. However, the voxel shape that it does is it traces over the exact shape of this particular block. Now you might say, well, that's great. Then I have the exact uh, voxel shape and that's all good. Well, with a simple model like this, that's totally fine. However, if you have any type of more complicated model, so for example, something like this, that's a model from my own mod and you can see well I have some rotated stuff here and yes it will actually trace all of these different small things over here the issue there is that voxel shapes are incredibly intensive for the processor and all of that to basically trace all of this because the voxel shape determines the bounding box meaning the collision with the player and other entities and this is why having these like crazy shapes over here having them trace perfectly is actually not a good idea so I'm going to show this regardless. So if you have the voxel shapes over here and you have the plugin installed, you can export the voxel shape. As you can see, we're going to choose the yarn mappings because we're using fabric at this moment. And then we can confirm a new window will open right here. So we can then just, you know, export the voxel shape and the JSON file. And it's going to make a Java file. Now I can just open this right here just for the sake of argument. And you see, this is the actual shape. Now this is the exact shape of this particular block over here. Now, once again, I don't recommend do doing this. I recommend making a voxel shape that is approximating your block. And I'll show you how I would do it. So this is the generated one. This might actually slow down the game already with, with this. And if you set down like a hundred of them, that might already be like a little bit of a not so good thing. What you can do is we can do this, right? Let's just start by actually making a voxel shape over here. So this is going to be a private static voxel shape and that's just going to be the shape and it's going to be equal to to block dot create cuboid shape and then here you can see we have to fill in one two three four five six different doubles over here but what we can do is basically so those doubles represent as you've seen the min x min y min z value and then the max x max y max z value so what does that mean well if we were to do zero 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 and then 16 16 16 what would happen is that this shape would just make the shape of a normal block the same that we have already now interestingly enough if we once again switch back over here we can use this tool to our advantage so we can take a look at this from the side and we can see well it's not really 16 high now is it let's actually do a wireframe mode so i can see this a little bit better so we have we rather have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten maybe eleven if we want the tray as well but maybe you know, let's say 10. So what we can do is we can just change the max y value, which would be the value from like the world bottom to the top, right? Change this to 10. And all of a sudden, we have an approximation of this voxel shape. And this is pretty much all that we need to do for this example right here. And we can just overwrite the get outline shape method over here. It's totally fine that this is deprecated. This is all okay. We can just return the shape over here. And that will pretty much be all that we need to do. 
Now, if you have a model, right? So let's just go into the model here again, textured. If you have a model that's, for example, something like this, right? Maybe maybe it looks like a little bit different so that the voxel shape would change if you rotate it around, then you would have to make then you would have to make multiple voxel shapes. If this is very complicated to you, the only thing I can really say is that number one, you might need a little bit more Java knowledge because it shouldn't actually be that crazy complicated over here. Number two, if you want to see something similar to this, I can recommend the 118 tutorial on the custom block model as well, where I actually do show all of the different shapes and all of that. This might be a good supplementary video to also watch after this. Whatever the case may be, the one thing that you have to remember, it, it does not matter how complicated your block over here might be. Do not make a one-to-one -one voxel shape it is a very, very bad idea. Try to approximate it, and that usually does the trick. Let's go into the game one more time to see our new voxel shape. All right, we found us back in Minecraft, and if I hover over the block, you can see, there we go, the voxel shape actually pretty much perfectly matches it. Yes, it doesn't match it exactly at the bottom over here, so, right, if, I, if I'm hovering over here, I'm still hovering over the block, actually, but is this really that big of a deal? It probably isn't. But if I stand on it, right, then you can see it actually works, so... The bounding box pretty much is what we would expect from this type of block, and it's pretty awesome indeed. So that is something for the voxel shapes. Right, and that concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.